Welcome to Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. So grateful you're with us wherever you are. If you're joining us here in the Santa Barbara, California area on television at TVSB, we welcome you. And we're so grateful for those of you joining us around the world at, at goodlifetelevision.org and the YouTube channel and all these other platforms. It's so, been so great to see uh, so many of you there. I think there's like 105 countries represented. There's been real amazing growth. So I, we're talking about the good stuff and it's good to see that people want to uh, hear about the good stuff and talk to, we're talking to great people and, and, and we're so great that uh, we're so glad that that uh, is getting out and that there's an impact from that. Uh, and then the podcast we've really been excited about over the last few months, it's good life conversations. So there are people that are podcast people. You just search good life conversations on any of the platforms and you can, you can hear all the long form interviews and at the YouTube channel, you know, you can see all the long form interviews, but you can also see what we call power clips. We kind of break those up. And of course we push those out on social media as well. So grateful to be presented by Bun and Chevrolet and our good friends there. And we're grateful uh, for you uh, that you're walking with us on this journey. And it's so exciting. And, um, and it's not every day that I am joined by a candidate for president of the United States uh, but I am today, and I'm grateful for this opportunity. Uh, Dr. Roland Roberts is with me. Welcome, sir. Great to be with you. Thank you, Dean. Uh, so we got we had the opportunity to meet a few weeks ago at an event for the first, with the First Lady of Kenya uh, in down in Los Angeles, and 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 so I was able to kind of meet Dr. Roberts, and then subsequently I've been able to kind of like kind of read about him and and kind of discovering what. Um, why he's doing this. And uh, Dr. Roberts is an American businessman. He's been a government advisor. Uh, he is uh, married and with children. Rebecca is his wife. And he, he's been an expert on cybersecurity and artificial intelligence defense systems. He was nominated to the Civilian Central Command Task Force for the U.S. Department of Defense, among other things, and was appointed to the U.S. delegation to South South Sudan, uh, where he assisted with the stabilization of of the transitional to permanent government. So he's been an advisor to national governments on matters of governance and national security, entrepreneurship, education. We're going to talk about all that. Um, and then there's there's other um, parts of his resume that I don't I don't want to take the whole show, but I but certainly uh, Dr. Roberts brings an impressive uh, resume and 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 base of experience to this. So I want to just start with the big question, then I want to kind of get into who you are, but why are you doing this? Well, ultimately, it's because I believe God called me to do it. Uh, I would not do it, no matter what the resume or background or experience, if uh, he did not say go and if he did not say go now. Uh, and I don't fully understand what he's going to do. I just know that we obey. And uh, and I knew it very clearly. Uh, and, and I start to backfill and see some of the things that he's doing. Uh, America needs God. Uh, we are in an upside down world right now where right is called wrong and wrong is called right, uh, where where good is demonized and evil is celebrated. And it has uh, people who were even uh, asleep to this. It has gotten so wicked that people are starting to wake up. And uh, and so I believe I'm running because America needs God. I think that's why he had me at this time run to stand in the gap. Very similar to whenever David went against Goliath. Uh, he came, he wasn't supposed to be doing that. He was doing on a different mission. And then he, but he said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? And it was actually even insulting to Goliath. Why, why, why do you send this little, you know, nothing to fight me? And uh, uh, so we have a lot of similarities, actually, uh, David and I, but uh, in this, but if the Lord does it uh, and calls it, that's ultimately why. But in America, yeah. without God will fail. And I'm telling you, we don't know what the future holds, but we know it will be worse than it is today. Twelve months from now, we are rapidly heading into a World War III or war with another major power. And uh, people, the con the entire national conversation right now is nothing like it will become election time. Wait, say, say that again. The current national conversation will be yeah. nothing like it will become election time. Uh, there is so many things that will happen between now and election. Uh, major crisis, wars, and so forth, that the things we talk about today that we think are going to determine the outcome of this election, the American public does not even have a clue uh, 
And, and, and quite frankly, that's what is almost comical to me, even with some of the other people running for president, because they're only running on what has been economy and other things. And of course, you have to be a president, both handling domestic matters and foreign uh, policy. But the next presidency primarily will be defined, just like George Bush's was, on foreign policy. And uh, you and and you want to have a strong economy, and we will, and we want to bring back righteous values in terms of family and strengthening marriages and homes because it has hurt so many of us uh, because we weren't taught it or we didn't have access to the tools that we need to succeed. And when 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 America realizes that we will all be more prosperous, we are safer, we are freer, we are happier, we are more prosperous when we have a strong marriage, a strong family that we celebrate and promote that. Uh, that is the nucleus. Uh, the strength of the family is the strength of the nation. So yep. I believe that that is our only deterrent uh, to what is coming. I, I think that's a very powerful statement. I, I That's amazing that you said that. I've had very similar thoughts about what 2024 is going to be like. And I, I haven't shared them uh, with very many people. But but the fact that you just said that, the, 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 the national conversation now versus what it's going to be, you know, in 16, 18 months is uh, very insightful. So let me just set some context here for people who are watching. We don't have a lot of political candidates or people on. We're open to anybody. We're talking about good life. We don't, when this is not about partisan fighting. Uh, we, you know, frankly, the politicians we've had on this program over the last four years, it's been probably all Democrats just because we're in California. <laughs> but uh, so don't be scared by the politics. Uh, just, just just check your political hat at the door for a minute. And we're going to focus on life, truth. What is the good life, the best thing for the country, the best thing for the world? And that's what this gentleman is, is speaking about. So I just want to kind of set the context there. But Okay, so so and with all that said, we could talk about whatever we want. <laughs> but uh, let me but, say, Dean, look, it, first of all, they don't even know what party I'm running, platform I'm running on. I'm running on God's platform, but I'm aligned. I had to run with a party uh, yeah. to be on the ballot. I will yeah. say this: what I have encouraged people to do, because whenever I'm in churches and I'm speaking to, uh, you know, even from in in the pulpit for churches, uh, as part of the campaigning and election season, what I challenged believers to do because it's really split i mean it's amazing to me how diverse of political on the political spectrum our churches are today and so what i have challenged them and encouraged is would you vote god over party in the 2024 presidential election would you vote god over party because we are so married and tied our identity almost to a political party god never said be a uh, pledge your loyalty and allegiance to a party he said right. to him that's and right. so all I've asked is for people to vote for him over a party and each one of our policies, we literally pulled from scripture. So we have the exact reference Bible verses next to each of our policies, because we wanted people to know this wasn't just here's the America that, you know, Roland Roberts wants to see. No, I believe this is an America that pleases God. And uh, that, that is in line with his with his word. What he said about every king of Israel was one of two things. He either did that which was right in the sight of God, or he did that which was evil in the sight of God. One of those two. And obviously, I want to be one that he says he did that which was right in the sight of God. So that's the that's my heart. That's the place that we're coming from. And I believe that crosses all the spectrum. I believe it's what America needs at this time. Uh, the division. People are sick and tired of the, oh, the yeah. nature of politics. You think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's unbelievable i mean we thought i remember when it was like president bush and the fighting back then like um you know and i'm like that's nothing now i, I look back and i'm like those were the good old days right. like you know ted kennedy with george w bush and the oval office talking about education policy like those were the good old days we got all you know there was like actually some congeniality and right. now i mean literally i it's it's unbelievable you know, it, you well, there, there was also the distinction between personal and professional. So while they had the professional differences, the Bushes and the Clintons, they were also having, you know, Thanksgiving dinner together, right. and Christmas meals together, while the rest of the country was divided. Today, uh, it's everything is personal. It, it, it is it has gotten it's, very personal no matter what. No, There's no, no delineation now. No, it's personal. It's vicious. 
uh, you know, and it could be on both sides. Obviously, it's the, the, yes. that's not the point, but it's uh, but rising above and taking a stand, standing in the gap. What you're doing, I, I first of all, I just want I, I do want to applaud that and say that I admire you for doing that. And David, you know, you think about David, man after God's own heart. You know, we th I think about Noah. I think about you know the guy who, who built the ark for 99 years. And had and preached and had no converts, you know, other than his family. <laughs> like he went the long haul. Why he had the same answer that you had at the beginning of this conversation because God told me to. And I There's think about no people that, that that's a, that's an amazing because you know you talk about the why. I, I always think about the why in life because I really feel like it's the why that keeps you going. Like it's not the what; it's really the why. And you really, you really have a why here in terms of you, you know, why you're doing this and the call of God and a clear vision. I love your three, you know, wisdom, truth, and sound principled leadership. Maybe we can just talk about that for a second. Talk a little bit about wisdom. Wisdom. Well, wisdom comes from God. That's where it starts. Uh, and it's not something you can go to Harvard or Yale or anywhere else and get. You can get a lot of knowledge and we're supposed to get knowledge. Uh, but wisdom comes from God, and uh, and that's not just a, a applied knowledge. Uh, the world has a lot of different ways to talk about wisdom, but uh, God clearly says in James that it comes from comes from Him. And Proverbs says that wisdom is to be more desired than than rubies, gold, silver, uh, than absolutely anything you could ever desire. Wisdom is infinitely more valuable. Uh, I believe it's been a long time since America has had a leader that is guided by wisdom, uh, which is which includes so many aspects and facets. Part of it is a, a deep discernment uh, of yeah. the times. You know, he, uh, God gave the men of Issachar a greater understanding of their times. God gave them a greater understanding. It is possible uh, with the wisdom of God to have a greater understanding of this time in human history and how to navigate it. Not because we've already been given the roadmap, not because he sent me the cliff notes of what to come. I don't know what's going to come, but I know who holds the future. And he's yes. given us a map on how to be today, how to govern today. What, what are the responsibilities of kings and presidents today and what the responsibilities of judges are today? I mean, the, the scripture is so filled with very practical application uh, for how to lead a nation. And so I believe that uh, wisdom is what is lacking. I think it's lacking in companies, uh, even as CEOs. A lot of them, you know, we we are data driven, uh, which we need to be data driven. We need to be looking at these things. But more than any of those, we need to be spirit led. Right. And that is the missing piece. Uh, everyone else is going by the same information. It's one of the reasons why people were so misled during COVID. And then people get mad when you have they feel like they've been deceived. But it is because uh, there were so many quote leaders that were not spirit led they were walking by sight not by faith and if and if we or by be, fear <laughs> or, exactly yeah. and by the way we know uh the spirit of fear is demonic right, right. He's not the author of uh, confusion he said he hasn't given the spirit of fear but of right. love power and sound mind so it's right. not for him. uh that's also why i'm not running a fear-based campaign right. it's a lot easier to win a primary if you run a fear-based campaign uh but it's hard to run on unify the nation but hate your next door neighbor right, you know? uh, right. i i can't reconcile that in my mind right when i was on the flights in iowa this weekend and uh you know when you're in restaurants and there are people of every stripe every background every ethnicity every sexual orientation everything all around and we're helping each other put our luggage in the compartment or you know they're being seated or you're getting standing up for them to sit down you're passing their trash back and forth to the stewards i mean we just live and operate, and it's the political spectrum that works tirelessly to divide us. Right. And uh, so I, that nothing about that is holy. Nothing about that is right. And it, it absolutely destroys the fabric of our country uh, and, and attacks. It's a direct attack on the family. Yeah, you know the the divide. I Kirk Cameron came on the show and he was talking about this. He said, "I I think I had a misunderstanding of what divide and conquer was." He was talking about dividing and conquer. He says, "Because we always think that's like, well, let's divvy up and so we can conquer." No, divide and conquer is the strategy of the enemy for this country. Yes, which is divide us so that we can be conquered. 
The only right. way that we fall, Dr. Roberts, isn't the only way that we collapse as a country is if we're divided. Without a doubt. And our founding fathers even knew that that's what would happen. But that's also why they work so tirelessly to do that. They do it through propaganda campaigns. And it's not just uh, the elites or the establishment. It's also foreign powers. There are people who have very vested interests financially, usually. It's usually motivated by greed or power. Those are the, the two primary drivers. Uh, but they work tirelessly to figure out what new avenue can we exploit now? Because, you know, instead of having the motto, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, they say the more we can divide to where no under no circumstances can you and I uh, cooperate and collaborate one with another. Think about how, uh, how effective the enemy has been, the enemy now being Satan, how effective he's been at doing that with the church. I mean, even right. inside of each denomination, there's so many different uh, flavors, if you will, of Baptist or Presbyterian or Methodist, Lutheran. I mean, there's a lot of different uh, styles. Uh, and many of them, even within their own sect, will not associate with others in their same association, uh, much less the body of Christ at large. And so when we see it at play so profoundly in the body of Christ can, and in the church, just imagine when you don't have the Holy Spirit uh, leading and guiding in the with secular lives. Oh, that's such a great point. Yeah, we, the, the, I, I, I'm at a point. Uh, I was talking to my mom yesterday, my dear mother, on the telephone, and she was asking me about the country. She always asks, you know, what's going on? What are we going to do? She, and I said, you know, I said I think we're in a place that I never thought we would be. To be truthful, um, what's going on? You know the uh the the viciousness you know that they, they want to put trump in jail now i mean i don't care if it's trump or barack obama i'm against it you know yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I i don't yeah. care which side i'm just telling you we don't we're not venezuela and we shouldn't be arresting political enemies for right. like these little tiny what is your take on this in terms of i mean what is happening yeah yeah, it, well, it, it, we're watching the end. And, and one of the things, going back to even whenever I was talking to the Lord before I ever said I would run for president, but when I was first, when I first heard the call and I was surrendering to that, which was not an immediate, it, was, it took me a couple hours to process that. Uh, but part of that two hour conversation with the Lord was this exact point, which is we're living in the last days. There are signs of the times all around. I mean, there's a hurricane earthquake, you know, hitting California. And we had both of those yesterday in my backyard, oh, just to right. let you know. We had a, <laughs> I was waiting on the hurricane. And all of a sudden, I'm like my chair's shaking. Well, now I got an earthquake. <laughs> yeah, you're you're right about that. It, it and that's what he said. There will be anomalies. There will be a, a lot of uh, in, uh, bizarre weather things. This is this is signs of the age and era in which we live in. And so I know we and believe in the Lord's soon return to earth. Uh, and, and when he does, I thought I want to be found faithful. I want to be found obedient. I want to be found right in the center of his will for my life, which, uh, and if he's calling me to do this, then there may not ever even be an election, uh, because he may come back before then. And I want to be found, you know, being obedient. So uh, I know, and I see that ever increasing. That's the state of the world we live in right now which is we better be focused on being everything we ought to be today because there is yeah. no guarantee there, there is a world tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and it's not because of global warming and climate change or anything else. It's because God Almighty holds all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That's, and uh, we yeah. will not continue indefinitely at the direction we're going. And when it comes to the political persecution, uh, look, they've been doing that for years already. Both sides of the political spectrum have been doing it. Uh, I have a friend that actually uh, did not go along with the weapons of mass destruction narrative, and uh, they came after him for something very, very uh, not only petty, it did it wasn't even a violation, but as you know, uh, they have said, show me the man and I'll find the crime. Right. And we're able to put him in prison, uh, and, and he served some time, they were going to let him out, and Trump it eventually pardoned him, actually. Uh, because it was false. It was wrong. Just because if you don't go along with the narrative, 
they will create the narrative about you and you will be imprisoned. So, and by the way, that was the Republican Party party doing it to someone inside the Republican Party. So this is on both sides and it's not just against each other. They weaponize the political system when it is convenient for them, period, end of story. As it relates to President Trump, though, and I don't agree that any sitting, any president should be going to prison. That's not who we are. I do believe in presidential immunity. I also don't believe presidents should be doing things wrong. But if I need to pardon a President Trump, I have I have to review his case like everybody else's case, whatever that may be at the time, you know, of taking office. But uh, I would I certainly don't want uh, any sentencing and people spending time in prison. By the way, if Joe Biden, if the Congress goes after him uh, in, during my presidency uh, for things he does as president, I would likely pardon him as well. Uh, now, things when he's not the president, it's a different story as it is with all of us. But I do believe in presidential immunity, and I, and I have a lot of respect for the office, and I have a confidence in the American people that we don't elect criminals to the highest office in the land. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, it's a whole new ballgame. When you talk about that, so we're, you talk about that story where the Republicans went after the Republican because he didn't toe the line. I, I just feel like if we were all in a room, you know, if we if if we were all in a room, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, everybody right to left, high to low, and we just had to make a decision: Do we want this? Do we want? these indictments for political reasons left all over the place. And you're right. You can indict a ham sandwich, you know, it, it, you'll find the man and you can find something, uh, you know, you can find something. Do I feel like if we were all in a room and we all had to like cast a vote, you know, a secret ballot on, is this how we want America to be? I think it would be overwhelmingly. We don't want this. Right. No, no, this is not who we are. And yes. yet here it is happening. I mean, don't, do, don't you agree with that? I mean, people don't support this. No, not at all. And even the people playing the game, I think, wish the game was different, wish the way it was the way it used to be. Uh, think about even uh, Barack Obama and Joe Biden in two, the 2007, 2008 version when they were against same-sex marriage. You know, that that's probably closer to what they actually believe. But because of the pressure because of the noise uh they went a different direction uh during his administration on that and i really believe that it's part and parcel to exactly what we're talking about where it's that's why we have to have people of character we haven't had politicians of character statesmen uh people who do put country over self not because we're perfect my goodness far from it, it i mean the, the the Roland Roberts before I gave my life to Christ, you know, has nowhere has no business anywhere near the Oval Office, just because of arrogance. Because I was trusting myself, and anything I did, even if with objective eyes, would be like, well, that wasn't the way to be a good husband, or that's not the way to do this, or that's not the way to, you know, it's it's silly because uh, when when you're when you're living your life, and I was trying to be Mr. CEO, and and I was just you know running companies and living it and you know, get my pilot's license and flying planes and doing all that. And in my head, you know, you're the cat's meow. And, uh, and man, but when I gave my life to Christ, it transformed everything. In fact, things did not get better for me. They got exponentially worse, but it's because he had to take me through so much of a fiery furnace to burn off all of that, the trappings of what I thought success was. Um, I, he had to bring me to the end of myself. And the only way to do that was lose everything, lose almost identity, because now it's not a matter of a title. It's you have to be comfortable with absolutely nothing for so long until you till I'm everything that you need. And I'm and you're actually rejoicing about what you don't have, not what you think you want or need. And that's a painful process. But I can tell you, I got to where I was enjoyed it because I knew that it was he would never do anything to hurt me. That what felt like pain to me was his blessings. I, yeah. I need him to perform that surgery on me. When you go yeah. to the have have surgery, you know, it would hurt. Uh, it, it can hurt, especially if they don't uh, numb or you're not going under. And I needed, you know, the divine hand to do surgery on me because I had gone my own way in life. And if and a lot of people never make that course correction. And that's still not because of me. It was just, you know, his grace and mercy in my life. Uh, but wow. I don't even 
think I'd be alive today. I mean, I really right. question if I'd be alive because I did not have the purpose. I I engaged in life threatening activities for the ad adrenaline rush or just to defy death if I could. Um, and so that's why I would, you know, do all of the scuba diving that I was doing. That's why I was flying planes and doing a lot of uh, you, uh, evasive driving, you know, uh, schools or techniques, uh, motorcycle, every anything that had a motor, I wanted to master it and, you know, do the one the one eighties and high speed reverse chases and all you know uh, <laughs> because I was searching. Well, all that is is the description of not some uh, great out there. Wow, look at this amazing person, which is what the world did to me during that time. But what that really was was all evidence of someone who was lost, someone who was searching, yeah. and I was. And yeah, I've been, I've been there, brother. Man, yep. when he got yep. me though. <laughs> yeah, now the, you're. You can try to fill the God sized hole with, you know, status or adrenaline or, right. you know, whatever it might be. Um, I get it. I've, I've been to the pit too and been rescued. And, you know, George, President Bush, who was a former neighbor of mine, I, we lived in Dallas for a couple of years in, in his cul de sac. And he would tell, he told me about his experience because he, you know, he came to Christ at 40, quit drinking. You know, I think Laura asked him, you know, was, do you remember the last day that you didn't have a drink? Which is always an interesting question. And uh, so his 40th birthday he wakes up with a hangover and that was it, you know, and he, he you know, and he talk about a guy, he, he had the very similar, I think, experience to what you're describing where, you know, came to the end of himself and, and, uh, and then look what happened in his life. I mean, how in the world, 20 years later, the guy's president of the United States, you know, I, who knows? I mean, I'm, I believe for you and, and I don't know what God has here, but I, but I think you're right about the next 16, 18 months. Like, I almost think it's like we better buckle up spiritually. I mean, if you have a prayer closet, you may want to like make it nice because it's time to get in there. I mean, don't you think? Without a doubt. I mean, and, and that's, but I think that's what, how he always works. You know, sometimes we have it so comfortable, so good, so easy. And all he ever wants is, is that communion with us every day. Yeah. And uh, the only thing that seems to drive Americans to their knees is tragedy. And yeah. I hate that. Uh, uh, and I have prayed, God, how do you, how do I be the president? How do you put me in this seat uh, without tragedy, without without doing something horrible to get the attention of the United States of America? When 9-11 happened, for the two to three weeks afterwards, there wasn't an atheist in the country. And every law about not praying in public places or wherever, uh, everybody was saying, can anybody like, does anybody have a direct line to him? Because we need him now. <laughs> because they didn't know what the next plane was dropping on their house. Right. And when things get bad enough, uh, you know, they say there are no atheists in the foxhole. When right. things get bad enough, our human nature innately cries out to God. Right. For help and for right. deliverance. Do you, do you think about I, even rolling, even that football player that went down, Darvin Ham. Yes. When he went down, I was Monday Night Football, the whole country's watching. All of a sudden, prayer was loud on the field. I can tell you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> every yeah. knee bowed. Every knee bowed because that's, you're exactly right. We don't have it. I can't do that. I can't fix this one. You right. know, God. I, and I wouldn't be surprised. That's why I'm staying. Uh, I know what why God had me run. And it's not because of me. I didn't even know. I, how do you, how do I make his name known? How do yeah. I get elected if I only make him known and, and, and not putting myself out there and, it's all about me, 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 because it's not, it's all about him, him, him. Uh, so I don't know how you win an election like that, but I said, I'll be faithful to your message. Just like you, the word he gave to Jeremiah and Nehemiah and all the prophets, uh, the minor prophets, and uh, he'd given the word for their land, for their country, their nation at that time in history. And uh, so I said, I will be faithful to the word you give me and put in my mouth for America. And so I, I believe that at some point, though, during this race, it will come down. Something will happen. And America will want a president that is as proficient in prayer as they are in policy. And mm -hmm. I thank God for the resume and for the, leading me in these ways because I had no clue what he was doing. It seemed too scattered to me. It didn't seem as aligned as and as pretty neatly packaged as I would have preferred. Just find a great job, run a big you know company, grow them. You know that was what I wanted. And then uh, God had other plans, and uh, and it was obviously for such a time as this. So I, de I definitely believe that something will happen and America will say, 
where's the president uh, that we may not have even voted for him, but he's the president. I have to vote for him just because he's the president. I know he's the president. Uh, I go back to something that happened that same week of 9-11. Uh, by 11 a.m., FAA had grounded all flights. By 4 p.m., there wasn't a plane in the sky, a civilian aircraft in the sky. And uh, on Wednesday, they said, we have to have a, a national prayer service on Friday. And so as the White House was working on that, uh, you know, they said, we, we must have Billy Graham here. You cannot have a national prayer service without Billy Graham. He is the face of this. Uh, you know, we need to heal the country. They're, we're reeling in pain. Uh, we need Billy Graham. Well, Billy Graham, health-wise, could not get there. So they had to send a plane. Well, they could not send, they, they actually, the White House and the FAA were kind of going back and forth on it because they weren't going to, to let it happen. And then finally, they found a way to get a plane there. Uh, but Dean, for an hour and a half, there was one plane carrying one man hmm. that the country needed at that hour. And that I believe in my heart that no matter what the race looks like, no matter what the polls look like, no matter what happens, at the appointed time, I will be that man. Wow. What a, that's amazing. What a story. Well, hey, I, I'm uh, I'm honored to know you, and I love your I mean, you're just responding. You're, you're, obe you're obeying, uh, you know, interesting. I had a lunch the other day with a couple of friends and we were talking about, uh, authority. Everybody wants authority. Right. And, and I had a mentor one time teach me that the way to authority, to have authority as a person is obedience. Mm. It's like little bricks being built to build a house. The, 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 the road to authority is obedience. And I feel like what you're doing here is just uh, is responding in obedience. And so I applaud that and we'll have to see what God does. Mm -hmm. I'll be watching. Mm -hmm. Everybody check him out. Roland Roberts, R-O-L-L-A-N, RolandRoberts.com is the website. Um, he's a candidate for president of the United States and we're honored to have you on the program. Thank you, sir. It's been great. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.